Good morning, new 1%. It's your boy Boomin coming at you with yet another video, guys. Go ahead and do all the things that the algorithm likes for me. Like button, subscribe button, all that. Let's get right into the show. So VeChain here looking lagging a little bit behind in the market, but we've expected that. VeChain kind of is the late bloomer to the party, but it does look good here. Um, as we can see, hopefully soon we'll see VeChain rise above that three cent mark. Almost did uh yesterday but uh it looks like some whales took some profits as they normally do so uh hopefully we can get up to that three to four to five cent range here soon i think we should do that by the end of the week with the way bitcoin is going crazy right now but hey guys there's just more time to accumulate continue to stack continue to stake continue to chill and hopefully we'll get to where we need to get to very very shortly all right guys let's go ahead and move on so bitcoin going crazy right now guys up at ninety two thousand dollars we should hopefully get to a hundred thousand dollars hopefully by the end of the week um i don't know if that's going to be possible or or not it just depends on what whales want to do and what institutions want to do as well uh but right now we are in full bull run territory uh typically <clears throat> the bull runs they kind of wash the money from bitcoin to ethereum ethereum to bitcoin bitcoin to ethereum ethereum to bitcoin and then uh once all that has been <laughs> once all the value has been extracted out of these two then the whales start to take the, the profits that they made from bitcoin to ethereum and start pouring them into altcoins and that's what that's what we call alt season if you guys are new here, we're not in alt season yet, okay? We have not seen a, an, an insane, you know, crazy type movement. I mean, we do have Peanut the Squirrel here, but I think that that's kind of a... <laughs> I, I don't even know what that is. But we got Pepe here going crazy, up about 47%. Uh, it has been listed to Robin Hood, which is really, really good. Bonk going crazy, but this is not... This is not alt season. If you've not been around for alt season yet, guys, uh, hold on to your hats. Um, absolutely insane. But uh, uh, yeah, this is awesome, guys. This might be the biggest bull run in the history of crypto bull runs. Um, it's just started off so hot, so fast, and uh, we haven't even hit alt season yet. And Bitcoin is going crazy, almost to a hundred thousand. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, keep stacking. Keep staking. Keep chilling. Uh, some advice I'd give you guys, uh, take profits for the love of God, take profits. Please do not listen to people on Reddit. There's going to be people on Reddit. There's going to be people on Twitter. There's going to be people on discord and telegram telling you to have diamond hands. Do not listen to those people. Okay. Do not listen to those people have a price target. And once your selected coin reaches that price target you sell your original investment okay you take your original investment out so now you're playing with house money does that make sense guys please take profits do not be left holding the bag at the end of the bull run like me okay i was listening to people especially in the v chain community and in the Cardano community, talking about diamond hands this, diamond hands that. And then when VeChain went down to two cents, never heard from them people ever again. They're gone. So you do not want to be left holding a bag. You do not want to be listening to people on the internet that you do not know. Take profits. When you hit a price target, take out your original investment so you didn't lose any money. And then move on, guys. All right. Um what i'd recommend is you dollar cost average in and you dollar cost average out so if if a coin reaches a, pr a price target you take 10 percent out once it reaches the next pri price target you take another 10 percent out and you dollar cost average your way out of the bull run do not do not do not listen to people talking about diamond hands that does not exist in a bull run everybody has diamond hands sure because everybody's making money but when that when that when those good times stop those people are not going to be anywhere to be found. They're not going to be there to console you when you've lost a lot of money. <laughs> They're not going to be there to console you when your portfolio is down 99%. They're going to be gone. 
All right, they probably already sold when they're telling you to have diamond hands. All right, guys, so if you're new to the channel, welcome, subscribe. We make videos every day. I'm going to give y'all tips for the bull run. And uh, just enjoy it, guys. It's a beautiful time. There's nothing like a crypto bull run. All right, guys, so on the on to the VeChain news here. VeChain included in the Coin50 Index, which tracks the performance of the 50 largest and most liquid digital assets by market cap. So this has been created by Coinbase. So this is a, an, excuse me, an index of crypto um, that you could track uh, the top 50 coins uh, in crypto. So this is pretty awesome, guys, as we can see here. Uh, the top three assets are Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana with a sprinkling of other cryptos here. Uh, let's see. Let me go back here and find it. So we can see here VeChain is about 0.15% of the total portfolio, but hey, that's still pretty good. And this will allow in, uh, institutional investors to come in and uh, reduce their risk uh, when... Um, when dealing with crypto. So uh, shout out to VeChain. This is awesome news. Let's go ahead and move on. Finally, guys, we have the CEO of BlackRock here. And if you want to know why VeChain is uh, going so hard and so crazy for sustainability and forcing behaviors, this is why. They need that sweet, sweet BlackRock money. And hey, I don't blame them. We all got to get paid somehow. I asked Larry Fink about whether he was surprised by the emphasis that corporate American investors have put on climate over the last year. Uh, those examples, including Microsoft, Salesforce and Delta during what has been a pandemic and to some degree, even a financial crisis. There's more and more people do understand that climate risk is investment risk. And as more investors understand that, and I wrote this in my last year's letter, we, when finance really understands a problem, we move that, you know, we, we take that future problem and bring it forward. And that's what we saw in 2020 and what we're seeing now. The flows even in January in sustainability funds are growing, not, not shrinking. Right. And this is going to continue in 2021. One of the, the questions that critics raise repeatedly is that companies announce plans to be, uh, to, to be net zero or, or to be neutral, carbon neutral or whatnot. Uh, in large part, that requires them to buy carbon offsets and things like that. But that the carbon offset market is not real. And in fact, some of it may even be fake. The idea that uh, certain forests or trees uh, are being um, conserved uh, that they might have been conserved anyway, and they're being double counted, and there's all sorts of uh, shenanigans taking place. What do you what do you think about that? I'm not here to to really understand whether there are shenanigans or not. Um, I believe there companies that buy carbon uh, 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 who buy carbon offsets. It, it's a legitimate process. Net net net, it does improve. Uh, the world and is it do we have the proper metrics and analytics to really measure it properly probably not but we're moving there look I, I like having these skeptics because the skeptics push us further so I'm not against that type of skepticism but I would say to you Andrew with total clarity and confidence that finance has caught on to the idea that we need to move forward on on sustainability. And I believe we're at the cutting edge of making substantial changes in how we invest, where we invest. And I believe this is going to move sustainability much faster than any of the skeptics ever imagined. And I would say, as you framed the, the prior question, so many of the skeptics did not even understand so much of what I wrote about last year. And it's happening. It, it, we're seeing an acceleration of money moving into more sustainability. Now we're talking about overvalued companies. A year ago, we didn't do that. So, you know, I couldn't win last year when everybody was skeptical that this is, that doesn't make sense. And now we're talking about a potential bubble. Well, obviously, it worked and I believe it's going to continue to work and uh, and I would I would but I'm not against what the skeptics are saying um, we need to create a true carbon market and that's one thing that I've had many meetings on how can we create a true 
quantifiable and certifiable carbon market. And that will address some of the skeptics' issues. But, you know, with some of the major people in, in the world's finance are talking about how do we create a true carbon market and so we could properly evaluate and price carbon effectively right. and we could have companies buying and selling carbon offsets and i think that's that's a net positive for the world shepherd smith here thanks all right so uh yeah that uh, straight from the owner of the world's mouth <laughs> um so as we can see, this is why uh, this is why VeChain is so heavy into you know sustainability and carbon credits. BlackRock CEO right here with his mandate. All right, guys, I love y'all. Keep chopping wood, keep stacking, sticking, chilling. Join the Patreon, and I'll talk to you soon with VeChain and Cardano updates. Have an amazing day. Goodbye. 